Hello and welcome to Dungeon Dino with me, the dragon, Snow Rice. Now, folks, I have a question for you. How do you cook at home? Do you make everything from scratch using fresh ingredients, or do you buy everything pre made? Or do you do something a little in between? Now, I like to think that most of us cook in a way that incorporates both pre made and homemade ingredients. So, with that in mind, folks, we're gonna cook in a style I like to call pre made homemade. So with that in mind, folks, today we're going to make four dishes. We're going to make four homemade sauces with big versatility and two dishes each using pre-made biscuit dough and pre-made pizza dough. So folks, we're going to be cooking barbecue, chicken, bacon, pizza, pork bao, donuts, and pretzel dogs. Now folks, if you can make these from scratch, that is wonderful, but not everyone has the time or money. And this is for them. But rest assured and without a doubt, these are delicious. So then, it's time to work. Okie doke folks, this is going to be the first round of voiceover stale. So we're going to make first a barbecue sauce, one of my very own recipe. So how do you make it? Well in the pot we're going to throw in um, 14 ounces of um, tomato sauce, a quarter cup of brown sugar, 3 tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of vinegar, I prefer malt vinegar, two teaspoons of chipotle chili pepper powder, and one can of Dr. Frickin' Pepper. Now from here, you mix it all up and let it boil till it reduces. Get it all nice and thick, as thick as you want, or as thin as you want. Now before you bottle it, be sure to let it cool down. And there we go. Now just about any bottle works, but I have my own ready to go. There we have it folks, a homemade, Barbecue sauce. Now this stuff is very useful. You can use it as a dip or use it to marinate meat. I do that with baked chicken and let me tell you, this is one of my favorite recipes for baked chicken right here. Now I use a combination of chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, some five spice, and after I bake them for about half an hour, I cover them all up with some of that barbecue sauce. And this stuff makes great for leftovers. This is delicious. So what are we gonna do with it right now? Well, we're going to use it for our barbecue pizza. Alrighty, folks, who's ready to make some pizza? I sure am, and this is going to be super easy. So I had this rectangular pan, and I oiled it up. After that, I got our pizza dough and laid it on there. So now here it is. And we're now going to add our barbecue sauce. Bread that stuff. Not too much, not too little. So spread it there nice and good. Just like making any other pizza. Maybe a touch more. Yeah. Oh crud. And there we go. Now it's time for cheese. Now only using a portion of this package right here. So I just used less than eight ounces. I probably used about six. So there that is. And next we have here some seasoned canned chicken. So I have here five ounces of canned chicken, and I season it with a teaspoon each of chopped onion, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. I put it in a pan with some oil, let it fry up a little bit, get some color, and it smells really good. So then, how about we add it to our pizza? Barbecue chicken pizza, better than a crusty crab pizza, positively. Now we're almost done, but we have one more thing to add. Some bacon bits. What makes barbecue better than already is some bacon. I have these bacon bits here in my pantry. Now if you have some bacon left over, chop it up, throw it on a pizza. But hey, in a pinch, why not? And mind you, this is not all of this. So let's add that bacon in there. Yay! Alright folks, look at that so far. Now let's add this schmexy thing inside of the oven. In a set of 425 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna put this in there for 14 minutes. So let's open its maw and put the pizza in. And now we will have some baking alchemy. Now, folks, we wait, and I'll see you in just a minute. Oh, all right, folks, let's get that pizza out of there. Mitten, and look at our barbecue beauty. There she is. Or looks to sprinkle some parsley on there. If you like them, add some pepper flakes and cut on in. And this should be enough for eight servings. All right, folks, it smells great. So there we have it, folks. 
our barbecue chicken bacon pizza. Alrighty folks, time for our next sauce. This one is gonna be a chili oil. Now this here is gonna be one of the easiest and cheapest ways to make chili oil. We're gonna start first with a quarter cup of veggie oil or your oil of choice. Then throw in two to four cloves of garlic, however much you want or lack thereof. And a third of a cup of chili flakes. What I would do personally for myself is use maybe half of um, chili paste instead, but this works too. And use a teaspoon of each worth of sugar and five spice. Now mix it all up and let it simmer. Let it cool down and when it is, you can then jar it. As you can see, I've done this before. I just ran out of some. And there we have a chili oil. Now that stuff is really easy to make and it's very versatile. You could put it into some soups, put it over rice or over eggs. And what's this dish right here? Well, that's the next thing we're gonna prep for this coming dish. Since our next dish is bao, we need a filling for it. So what kind of filling is that going to be? We're making an old favorite of mine. We're making a simplified version of a Vietnamese dish called pork adobo or thuc ho. Now this dish uses pork belly and it's delicious, but I'm not doing that right now. Sometimes in a pinch, I'll make a version of this using only bacon. That way I can mince it all up and put it over rice. And it makes for great leftovers, although I make it much more saucy so I don't have to season rice. Now bear in mind, for real thick ho, I would use a different recipe. But for this version, I'm going to use one onion, chopped up of course, half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of oyster sauce and soy sauce each, one tablespoon each also of fish sauce and chicken bouillon, and two cups of water, or enough to cover the meat to simmer. Let that boil over and cover it up. After about 10 minutes when the meat is nice and braised, take the lid off there. Cook until you have yourself a nice and thick sauce. And there we have it. This stuff is great on rice. But you can also put it in soups. Or in this case, we're putting it in our bao. So then, our next food, we're making ourselves some pork bao. And for anyone unfamiliar, the style of bao I'm doing is bun bao. Mind you, this is in no way an authentic bun bao. Now I had bun bao growing up. It has ground pork in it, Chinese sausage, and an egg. What I'm doing is a combination of two dishes. I'm doing bun bao and thick ko. As you can see here, I took some eggs and I boiled them. I took our can of Phil's Ray Risky dough and flattened it out. So we have our thick ko filling right here. So before I play around with them, let's say goodbye to the paws. All right then, so let's get a piece of that and get ourselves an egg, stretch it out a little bit more, pull it over like so, same on the other side. Now take that and twist it the heck around. Now folks, it ain't the prettiest, but here we have a raw bow. So let's take that <clears throat> and get a cupcake liner. So when we steam this, it will not stick to the surface of what it's cooking on which is this plate. Now you're probably wondering, how in the heck are we gonna steam bao on a plate? Well, if you know me, you know I have a particular way of steaming bao, or I should say a particular hack for doing so, because I do not own a steamer. But you know what I do own though? A rice cooker. So I took some aluminum and made it into three balls. I put those balls in the rice cooker and put some water in. So while the cooker cooks, it's gonna steam up and steam our bao. So I'm gonna make some more real fast and put them on here. So then, jump cut. Welcome back. And here we have our raw bow. And now it's time to cook them. So open that thing up, lay them on in gently now. In the boiler you go. And one more thing, boom. Now typically bow takes 15 minutes to steam, but we're gonna wait 20 minutes. So the uh, rice cooker has time to heat up. Now folks, I'll see you all again when this is all completed. Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. And look at this. Look at that fluffy, dense bow. And I'm serving with it our chili oil. Now if you want a little extra punch of salt and a little bit of soy sauce, 
Gonna put that in the middle right there. Now that looks pretty. And how about we give that a taste test? Okay then. Let's peel that liner off. See that right there? Oh boy. Hot. Oh my god. Look at that right there. That tastes so freaking good. Those juices in there. And the um chili oil. Sorry. Not full. The chili oil has a nice kick to it. It's not too much. It's just enough. Get another in there right there. Get a good one. Okay then. And that is that. So folks, there we have our chili oil and our bow. With that done, it is time for sauce number three. Our next sauce is a frosting made for cinnamon rolls and for bread pudding, and in this case, for donuts. What you need primarily is milk and powdered sugar. So we're taking our powdered sugar and using two cups worth of it. And for our milk, we're using six tablespoons. All you need otherwise is maybe a teaspoon's worth of vanilla extract. And there we go, we are done. Yes, it is that simple and easy. And like our other sauces so far, this is very versatile. You can add so much to this. You can make it chocolatey or fruity. And in this case, we're gonna make it a little bit fruity. We're gonna add three drops of red food coloring and a teaspoon's worth of strawberry extract. Now I chose these colors and flavors because I wanna make Simpsons like donuts. And the prep for said donuts is gonna be super easy as well. All we need to do is take some Fillsbury biscuit dough and flatten it. Aside from that, we're going to cut some holes in those, and those holes are our donut holes. And there they are. These things are ready to go. Alrighty, folks, on to our next dish. Now, you're probably wondering, Stale, why did you finish it already? Trust me, folks, I have not yet. You see, folks, these donuts right here are the easiest thing we're making today. All you gotta do is lay them in a bath of oil, let them fry up a bit, flip them over, and let them dry in a paper matted plate. And the best dipping tool, in my opinion, is wooden chopsticks. You don't want plastic to melt. The reason I fried these already is because they take no time at all to cook. Let me show you. We have our last two biscuits, and soon to be donuts. Lay one down, lay one down. And look at that, they are frying up already. Just to prove my point, I'm not going to make any cuts. Let's just watch. You got some color there right now. Look at that. Beautiful. Dance around a little bit. Careful with that hot oil. Look, see? See? All ready. All freaking ready. So there's a few more seconds. On the second side, then we let them dry. And the last thing we're gonna do is dip them in our sauce. And decorate them. And decorate them. I'm stuttering, I'm sorry. And decorate them a bit with some sprinkles. See, that's trouble with no jump cuts there, ain't it? Alrighty. I'm gonna lay those down real fast. And look at that! Look, freaking look at that! That took no time at all. Now, folks, I love going to the donut shop and getting some fresh donuts. But hey, if you're short on money and want to impress the family, buy a can of biscuits and freaking make them yourself. Speaking of which, we're not done yet. Let's take those and get our sauce. And Boom, look at that beauty. Now, let's do that to all the rest. What have I got? Okay then, one sec folks, gonna rinse my hands. Okay, and one more step, we want the icing to set a bit, 
But before that happens, let's sprinkle these things. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Now with the frosting, you want to act fast because it sets pretty freaking fast. But I think I got them there on time. And see how freaking quick and easy that was? We're already done. Here we have, folks, our donuts. So folks, it is time for our very last sauce. It's gonna be a cheese sauce. All you need for this thing is a cup and a half's worth of cream and a cup's worth of a cheese of your choice. It could be more than one type of cheese that depends on you. But that aside, that's it. That's a cheese sauce right there. I often use this one for mac and cheese. With mac and cheese, you typically need some butter and some flour to make a roux. But the great thing about heavy cream is that you skip all of that. The dairy already has the butter in it. Now, depending on the use of the sauce, you can season it different ways. If this were mac and cheese, I'd be using paprika, amongst other things. But given this is for dipping, what I'm going to do is add some chili powder and some jalapenos. I'm adding a teaspoon's worth each of chili powder and of salt. And I'm also using a four ounce can of diced jalapenos. Now these jalapenos are gonna give our sauce that signature mall or movie theater cheese sauce taste. Now like every other sauce we've made so far, this one is very versatile. You can um, swap the cheddar I use for mozzarella and put that on a Philly cheesesteak. And again, mix and match cheeses and you can use it for mac and cheese. Or additionally, throw that in a taco or burrito. Or as well, you can throw in some pica de gallo. You have a dip for a sports game. And now with our cheese sauce done, we're making our last dish. Some pretzel dogs. And what we need for these is a store-bought pizza dough. We're laying out our pizza dough and slicing it into eight long slices. We are taking these long slices and wrapping them around hot dogs. And well, that's that for prep. Alrighty folks, it is time. <laughs> Alrighty folks, it is time for our last dish, our pretzel dogs. And here we have our delicious and beautiful cheese sauce. Now if you use Bar S hot dogs, you can make these for only $3. But for this batch, I'm using some Ballpark Franks. So these should be delicious. Now to make this pizza dough much more like a pretzel dough, what we're gonna do is cook them like they are pretzels. So I have here some boiling water and a cup's worth of baking soda. Here's what we're gonna do. Add that. It's gonna foam the heck up. And next, we deep, <laughs> deep, we dip these into there. But we only need to for half a minute. So, in they go. One, two, three, four, these deep divers go, go, boil for me. And after they boil, we're gonna wash them with an egg wash. Now, I don't know if you can see over here, y'all, they've risen to the top here. So I say they're about ready. I'm gonna lay them down onto this grease pan. And one more of this batch. There we go. Rinse and repeat. Deep divers, go! Be free! Let me get some footage for y'all. I'm gonna say these puppies, <laughs> hot, hot dogs puppies, I'd say they're about ready. Bring them out, lay them down, lay them down. Okay then, I have laid them out. Let's get them a nice little egg wash right here. This is just one beaten egg, by the way. Now this will give it that nice pretzel browning we're all familiar with. Now, look at those. Alrighty, these things are ready. And the oven is already preheated at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the oven you go, puppies. See you soon. Now I'll see you all in just a bit here. Hello again, folks. There they are, our pretzel dogs. Now just look at that right freaking there. Now these right here are darker from what I meant them to be. Now when I made these before, they had a nice golden brown. And bear in mind, I made these the exact same way with only like one difference. The difference being the egg was used a whole egg for this batch, while the last one used an egg yolk. As you can see here, these are much freaking darker. But like, squish them here, they feel like pretzels. They don't feel scorched or um, burned, they, they feel like normal. But hey, regardless, 
I'm gonna enjoy these. And I'm gonna share them. So in any case, folks, we have here our pickle dogs and our cheese sauce. <laughs> and despite that, it does not taste burn. I got scared when they brought them out. But those work! It's still perfectly good pretzel dogs. Just darker. I don't know why. Hmm. See that right there? Hmm. No lie. That's one of my favorite things that I've made for this. That cheese sauce is so goddamn good. And it's so simple. And these freaking pretzel dogs, like, again, I thought they were burned. But it's just more pretzel y. Honest to goodness. So, um, I'm happy. I'm happy with this. I was scared from the look of it, but nah. Like, these are perfectly good freaking pretzel dogs. Very happy. At cheese sauce, too. Wonderful. So, folks, we made our four dishes. And you see how easy they were to make? Our sauces did a lot for our dishes, and they can be used for so many other dishes. But one thing all four have in common is that they're all tasty and delicious. Well then, I don't think there's anything else to add, so in any case, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time in my dungeon.